Our first session in this block is going to feature a very exciting adventure with an epic poem. So the title of the next talk is called PKP and PIDS, an epic poem. And we are very fortunate to have this talk delivered by Dr. Juan Pablo Alperin. Dr. Alperin is the assistant professor at the School of Publishing at Simon Fraser University, also the associate director of research for the Public Knowledge Project and the co-director of the Scholarly Communications Lab. So thank you very much to Juan Pablo for being here today, and I will hand it over to you. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you might be. It's afternoon where I am on the, uh, in, in Vancouver. Uh, I would love to, uh, before I sort of get started and I dive into this poem, first say that this is uh, my first uh, PID Palooza. I've wanted to go every year. I've watched with Envy from afar. Um, the timing of it has never worked out that I was able to go. And so it's great to have this opportunity to be here uh, and to be able to join you. I would love to know out of those of you that are in the crowd where you're joining me from and see if you're, are you just starting your day? Are you at the end of a, of a long day of, uh, of being a PID a palooza? Uh, or so just if you want to just join into the chat and just uh, say a quick hello to where you're joining us from and just to give me a little sense of who's out there and who I'm talking to in this sort of uh, online world where you're just kind of speaking into your laptop. Um, it's just uh, sort of good to know that there is an audience out there that you're uh, and that you're out there and listening. Uh, um, I, you know, took this uh, this uh, invitation and realizing that this is a festival and not a conference, uh, and so I thought I should do a performance instead of doing uh, just a straight up conference presentation. Uh, and so uh, I debated as I was submitting my uh, the the description to my talk. How should I do this? Do I want to commit to doing a presentation a, a poem? presentation uh, and I decided I would go ahead and give it a give it a try and now I've spent the last few days trying to create this masterpiece for uh, for you all uh, let me share my screen and uh, you should be able to then see the poem uh, side by side with my uh, with my face so let me see if that's working um, and uh, with that, let me uh, go ahead and uh, and get started. Just want to make sure I've got my time here next to me, and that make sure that I make, I'm not going to be missing anything that might be happening. So, PKPs and PIDs, an epic poem by Juan Pablo Alprin. Uh, I will. Uh, by the way, this performance, sorry, will be in three acts. The first will be the poem. Then I thought I would do a lightning talk, just in case the poem doesn't convey the message that I want to convey uh, as well as I uh, hope that it will. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, in which I want to give you the opportunity to share your own PID-related poem. So if you're capable of multitasking, you can start thinking of your poem as I'm, as I'm talking. And otherwise, at the end of the block, we'll use up the time for both questions. Uh, so I invite questions in the form of a poem, uh, or just a poem that's PID-related. I'll give you some tips and hints that I uh, picked up as I was doing this over the last uh, couple of days and getting this ready. So without further ado, here is the PKP PID epic poem. Act one. PIDs are amazing. We all know it's true. When the literature is fractured, they act as the glue. There's so many to choose from, but they're not all the same. The one thing in common is an acronym name. Back in the day, we all knew of the doy. When it comes to persistence, they're the real McCoy. But there's other to choose from. The doe is not alone. There's so many to choose from when faced with a clone. To find PIDs, just open your eyes. You see, there are handles, URLs, and URIs. For people and places, we've opened the door. To DOI, we added ORCID. And now we've got ROAR. They're beautiful. Their icons look beautiful. They end on their own. But put them in line and they're quite an eyesore. Oh no, no alignment. The colors all clash. Don't look at them now, focus on my mustache. But enough on the acronyms, icons, and options. I promised an epic, a story with PID adoptions. 
And while I delivered in this silly rhyme, and I hope you'll indulge me at least just this one time, for it is a tale with some lessons for all. How, if we're not careful, we'll have a PID cabal. We're among friends, so let me be candid. I love PIDs and I wanna see them expanded. And I don't just mean implement what we've got. We need new ones, variety. We need the whole lot. Oh, I know it seems easier to pick just a few. Pick toys, pick orchids, and of course, pick roars too. It's easier, it's better, some of you will say. And variety will lead us astray. We're building on data and it's all such a mess. If we had standardization, we'd make more progress. And while I love the idea and I share in your vision, among some communities, this is received with derision. What can get a PID? What work is included? Perhaps more importantly, whose work is excluded? If you pick on the DOI, someone has to pay. If you pick on ORCID, only researchers play. At PKP, we have a global community. We need to pursue every good opportunity. Above all else, we value diversity. We insist on supporting those facing adversity. But even we, with our open source project, can't find solutions that will be all perfect. We have limited resources and too many choices. How can we be sure to consider all voices? Reluctant to pick any winners. But now I see we were just slow beginners. It took us forever to partner with Crossref. And when I look back, I see we were tone deaf. While we were so careful to avoid the selection, we missed the opportunity to make good connections. Avoiding all choice was an easy way out, but we were left with some lingering doubt. Was it right to leave it all up to you? If we did not choose to lead the development, then who? So now we embrace PIDs old and new, and we try to do it with our small dev crew. We found the right balance in our implementation by making sure we play nice with your application. We do want variety and we can't get locked in. So our solution was to make everything a plugin. While it is necessary to include the main players to build a knowledge graph with all of the layers, openness also means not betting solutions and not putting all of your marvels on one institution. At this point, I know you're probably tired of hearing these rhymes. Sorry. At this point, I know you're probably tired of hearing these rhymes that are so uninspired. But have no fear, my fellow PID nerds. I'll wrap it up now with some wise words. The notion we can connect everything is illusory. And any attempt is simply buffoonery. The bounds of scholarship cannot be defined, but building connections can help all mankind. So go out there, my PID nerds. Follow the herd. Work with the PIDs that are most preferred. But as you do it, do not close your eyes. Ignoring diversity would be so unwise. So that's the end of my, uh, my in the poem version of this uh, presentation. Uh, but I do want to, uh, so, you know, as you use that as an inspiration for your own PID related poems at the end, and like I said, I'm going to give you the warning again, because I will be inviting you on stage to read your poems. Um, but I do want to highlight a couple of the important points that I was trying to communicate through, through that poem. So this is, uh, let's say, the Cliff's Notes or the Cole's Notes version uh, of that, the explanation of the poem. And now we're doing the literary criticism of my P, of my PID uh, poem. So let me just give you a couple of minutes on uh, a small talk around some of the lessons that I think that uh, we at PKP have learned over the years um, as we sort of struggled to understand what it is that was our responsibility to our community as we try to do open infrastructure so uh, through our open source software uh, and try to uh, interact, interface, implement all of the different uh, um, uh, persistent identifiers that are out there. In fact, we, it's an approach and a philosophy that we take with all of our integrations, whether it be with, um, with uh, nonprofit actors or whatever we do with commercial, commercial entities. Um, the first is part of our core philosophy that for us, that open infrastructure 
uh, is for us a means of promoting diversity. And, and so then that includes sort of bibliodiversity. So not just uh, uh, making sure that the voices of different groups are included from around the world, but also that different formats and different forms of doing scholarship and different actors and the ways that they create knowledge uh, are participating. Um, and so that means that we were always very careful to not try to rely on any one uh, persistent identifier, because as soon as you make a choice for a persistent identifier, there's going to be some people or some types of scholarship that won't be included, that won't be able to participate in that, in that scheme. And so we're always being very careful that for us, open infrastructure means not um, on any, any one group for any particular uh, kind of functionality. Um, and the other way that we try to do that is to make sure that we enable multiple forms of connection. Um, so this means that uh, it's not if we, you know, while certain like DOIs are able to connect and are able to sort of share metadata uh, about, a, uh, let's say, a research article, uh, we also make sure that that metadata is also available through our REST API and through the uh, uh, through the uh, OAI a PMH interface and in meta tags and so on. Um, as I was saying that the there's no, the, the idea that we are going to try to build an infrastructure uh, based on a single PID and all we need is for everybody to adopt it is a little bit of a fool's, uh, of a fool's errand. Uh, no one solution, no matter how much adoption there is, is going to capture everything or everyone because as soon as you make the choice for any uh, PID, you're going to end up uh, leaving some people out. And so while encouraging adoption of, of the PIDs that you prefer, and that certainly makes things easier for people that are trying to implement and build things on top of that um, easier, uh, encouraging that option is good, but encouraging good practices around uh, following um, things, doing things in a consistent way, making sure you're following and uh, sharing your data and you're uh, linking everything, following good standards um, is, is more important. We resisted, and this is what I was trying to get at in the early parts of the, uh, you know, or maybe in the middle part of, of the poem there, we kind of resisted uh, promoting DOIs and ORCID because they included much of our community, which in our case is largely, uh, you know, about two thirds in the global south in places where the paying for the membership or even paying for the DOI deposits proved to be, uh, was prohibitive. And so we were kind of reluctant to take on um, any work that meant promoting the DOIs because we knew that there would be a large swath of our community that wouldn't be able to participate um, in using them, even if we implemented. Um, and, but now we've realized that it was a bit foolish to not um, embrace that, uh, that support because of the added benefits that, the, and that this community certainly doesn't need to be convinced of those added benefits um, of, uh, of, of adopting things like, like DOIs or adopting ORCIDs or no ROARs. Um, but We've embraced them, but very importantly for us is that we don't we don't force them upon people. We try to make sure everything continues to function. You can make entire like good use of all of the software, even if you don't take those things on. And that's an important way of making sure we incorporate them, allow people to get the benefits from them, but also allow people to continue to work outside of them if they either can't access them for whatever reason, or if they choose not to because it's not aligned with their way of working or the kinds of outputs that they're doing. Um, so I was saying how we implement these things and those details are key. So we've implemented as much as we can through plugins so that the rest of the software doesn't rely upon uh, those implementations. You can use OJS, you can use OM, uh, the, the preprint software uh, OPS entirely without needing to uh, embrace any of the or use any of the plugins that uh, uh, for the different PIDs. But if you turn them on, then you get additional functionality. Um, and as I was saying earlier, we also implement many different connection mechanisms. So our REST API, the OAI PMH interface, uh, embedded metadata, et cetera. So we try to make sure that people can still connect the literature um, in different ways and through different mechanisms. So the final sort of concluding message before we use the rest of our time for questions and for to hear all of your great poems uh, is that, yes, let's embrace the IDs, let's encourage their adoption, um, but let's not forget that there's never going to be uh, perfect solution, no matter how widely adopted that they are. We need to encourage other formats, other people, other platforms, and even other PIDs to play nicely with all of the work uh, that we do. And now for actor, your, your time to shine. Uh, I want to just sort of give you a couple of uh, uh, formats. I will invite you to just type in your poems into the chat window. Um, which I'm going to go and look at in a second as I've been presenting. I haven't been able to, to, to look, but I'll look in a second. 
And I just want to give you a couple of uh, basic poem types that you might want to consider as we use the rest of our time to sort of uh, have a bit of uh, a little bit of fun. So the symbol is this uh, the simple poem, the classic, uh, roses are red, violets are blue that you've heard. So this is a simple A, B, C, B rhyme, which means that the second line and the fourth line have to rhyme. Um, you can also do an A, B, A, B poem where the first, second, the first uh, uh, line rhymes with the third and the second line rhyme, uh, line rhymes with the fourth. I'm getting tripped up on my words there. So a simple A, B, C, B poem would be roses are red or sometimes they're pink to help with persistence. Use the doi in place of the link. Uh, another poem that's also very uh, a form of poem to involve rhymes for those that are not so inclined with rhymes or not as favorable to them as I am is the haiku. Uh, this is a syllable. Uh, you have to, the, the format you're constrained by the number of syllables in each line. Uh, and here uh, I'll read you my haiku. It's, it's, so the haiku is five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables again. My institution, I do not want dinosaurs. I just want to roar. And lastly, the limerick. So limericks tend to often uh, be, um, uh, have a bit of a slightly, uh, uh, an edge to them sometimes, let's say. Uh, I would encourage you to not make them edgy in this context to make sure that we're abiding by the code of conduct. But uh, the limerick has sort of this form of rhyme where the first, second, and last rhyme at lines rhyme, and then the two in the middle, and there, you'll hear the, the, the meter that needs to go with it. There once was a researcher named Juan. Name was so easy to pun. He said with a grin as he clicked the ORCID login, I am unambiguously the only one. So those are my example poems uh, to get us sort of started. There is a link there, a rhyme zone was a place where I went to when I needed to find a word to help me rhyme. Um, and with that, let me stop sharing my screen and uh, let's see what poems you're coming up with in the chat or questions that I'd also be happy to answer. If you, uh, I'm not sure how, so I mean, I know we can invite people up on stage. Uh, and so uh, I think if anyone would like to read their poem on stage, maybe just uh, with your poem, just put a little, uh, put a little asterisk at the end of your poem if you would be interested in coming on stage to, um, uh, to read your poem yourself. Otherwise, I can have my hand at reading your poem, but I would much rather that you come and read your own. Or if you've already posted your poem in and you want to be invited up, you can repost it or just say that you'd like to be invited. There's some great ones in here already. Yeah, I'm already. Uh, I'm kind of going to go from bottom to top here. So I'm liking already, uh, Brian. Uh, uh, roses are red, violets are blues. PIDs are important, but which do you, I choose? Oh, the, thank you, PID Palooza uh, host uh, poem. I won't read that one aloud, but I appreciate the, uh, appreciate the flattery. Uh, I'm also happy to take questions. So I don't, I know that there's, um, uh, I'm seeing, uh, uh, just trying to see that there's a question feature here. So I'm just going to look around there and see if, when will this be published as a children's book? Well, I'll put this out there with a CC BY license. Um, I'll put that on the deck. So whoever wants to take on uh, any, we need to have some publishers that are in the room. Uh, anyone wants to take this on? It's out, well, I'll put it out there, CC BY. So do something good with the profits that you're going to get from this. Seeing, I'm just going to take this other question. And then, uh, please, if you have the poem, you want to come on stage and read it. It would be great. And then we get to see some of your faces as well. Um, uh, so I see another question, though, here in the chat. I love the idea of embracing all kinds of PIDs and open uh, to diversity. I worry that these other PIDs won't be around for the long run for uh, the support and persistence. So any thoughts? So there is the, you know, the, the organizations that are behind PIDs right now they give us some assurances that those persist that persistence is going to is going to be there, uh, but there are, I think that uh, other forms and other schemes that have been around uh, for allowing us to link the literature. So the persistence obviously is an important element to it, but there's also the importance of the connections to the literature and the, the persistence that might not be 
forever persistence if something is around and doesn't work in the in the very long term i think it's okay to accept some amount of have, having some taking on some amount of risks in order to be able to uh, make sure that we are allowing all forms of scholarship to penetrate it's just as much of a risk to not include something in what we consider to be the formal scholarly record now because of its risk to losing its persistence in the future as it is to do the other way around to 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 uh, take things on and, and risk those those linkages being broken uh, down the line so um i agree that there's a there's a potential risk there but I think that the consequence or the, the alternative is just as, uh, just as risky or just as bad. Should I read another one of these? Uh, should I read another poem? Or talk, people that have, I, yeah, or I've, also I know some people that have already been on stage in other rooms, so I know that their cameras and things are set up and that they're looking good. I would invite you know, maybe Todd, you wanna come on and can I, can I nudge people to come on stage so you don't just have me. We still have another few minutes before we need to go. Could we, can we, can, I'm just going to pick on people that I have met in real life before. I don't want to pick on people I don't know, but can I, can I, can we invite Todd on stage and see if he accepts? Todd, if you, Sent an not invitation. Okay. <laughs> right. If you don't feel comfortable, by all means, just, just turn it down. Um, how do I decide on what PID to choose for the, oh, this is a, sorry, it's a haiku, so let me read it. How do I decide on what PID to choose for this one poll? Uh, All right, Todd, let's hear yours. Oh, geez, now I'm embarrassed. Thanks for, thanks for humoring <laughs> me, by the way, I appreciate sure. it. Sure, uh, this does not at all compare to what you did, um, but a haiku. Um, sh uh, shout out to all of our friends, CDL and data site, ORCID, NISO and Crossref, make PIDs fun for everyone, uh, haiku. Thank you, Dad, and thanks for humoring me. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, what else do we got? Okay, our RRIDs are great for mice that have a date, point to a cell line, not yours, but mine. Cellosaurus has the things that uh, are, oh, the line breaks on this thing. It makes it very hard to figure out where things come. Let me read it and then I'll try it again. That was, I butchered your poem. Uh, so Anita, if you want to come on and give us a good reading, a rendering of your poem before I butcher it again, that would be great. Come down again, Anita, if you want to turn down the invitation, by all means. Inviting Anita, just in case. What about yeah. Nicole? Any interest? I know some of these people, so I might pick on them. But you can reject it. I don't want to force anyone. You don't have to accept the invitation. <laughs> Thank you, Anita. Yeah, go back to my poem now. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, Let's see, uh, our IDs are great for mice that have a date. Point to a cell line, not yours, but mine. Cellosaurus has all the things that are needed for our IDs to make. All right, it was kind of halfway between a haiku and a limerick, but you know, it's- Now, now it's you see why nice. I struggled with it a little bit, but, it, but, it, but it's great, I like it. Uh, thanks for humor, I guess. thanks for That's coming good. on. Thank you. Know. you. Nicole, we'd love to hear yours as well. Um, I feel like you're an incredibly hard act to follow and the haikus are quite easy to read. Oh, sorry, to write. Um, but I love the old, well, hang on, I can't say but. I love the old stuff. It's better than the new stuff. It needs retropids. And if you want to know more about retropids, I'm speaking in about four hours about them. That's perfect. Oh, yeah, this is a great opportunity for those that have uh, uh, an organization, a product, uh, or, or just an idea that you want to give a little shout out to. This is come on stage and you can promote your talk. So that, uh, that's great. Look forward to that in a few hours. No problem. It'll still be, oh. yeah, it'll still be early enough here in, uh, in Vancouver that I can still join. I know some of the folks that are in Europe are uh, the, the time zones. It's great, by the way, that we're keeping things running all night so that all people from all time zones are able to join. 
Um, we've got a few more uh, minutes. Uh, Sebastian is uh, willing to come on stage. Can we give him an invitation? Yes, here we go. And I think maybe we should make this the last one just so we have a few minutes of switching time. Sure. And then we encourage everyone to keep the poetry juices flowing in the Slack after this. So uh, we want to uh, keep that going. Sebastian, we are inviting you. I hope that we will be able to capture this chat and we can maybe post the poems. Uh, we can we can keep track of the poems and, and give them a post somewhere. Yeah. Sebastian, welcome to stage. Look forward to Hi. hearing the poem. It is entitled A Question. It is also a question. When we think of preserving adversity, what is the main source of adversity? Is it mainly just fundings or do we need other good things to ensure the PID system's unity? That's good. I love it. Question in the form of a, uh, the, uh, the, a question in the form of a poem. So um, to answer this now, otherwise I can take it to the Slack. Yeah, so I think uh, let's maybe stop there and give a round of applause answer. to Juan and a round of applause to our poets, all of the poets out there here at Pitapalooza. So I think there's one question in the chat that we can move over and then we will also be encouraging everyone to share their limericks and haikus in the Slack as well. So a round of applause for Juan and everyone. This was so wonderful. Thank you for humoring me uh, on, this, uh, on this sort of silly uh, adventure. It was fun to have a chance to do a performance instead of just to talk. Um, Sebastian, I'll take your question to the Slack and Alice as well. I'll jump on there and, and, and any other questions, but also, yeah, it'd be great to see some of your poems. Uh, so thanks again for the invitation and for this opportunity.